So, yes, pandas. So it's a Python package that builds on NumPy and allows, allows us to do many more fancy operations that are basically involving tabular data. <clears throat> that will involve tabular data. So we will see this has lots of different built-in functions and things like that. So pandas is one of these things that, at least for me, um, like I know the basics of pandas, but for almost everything I do, I will do a web search and then figure out, okay, how do I do this particular thing to find the functions I need to do it? Um, yeah, that's the same for me. Yeah, and I'm sure there's some people that know it really well and do things. But <clears throat> yeah, and actually I wanted to add, add an exercise here which was specifically about doing this web search to learn more. So what's the point? So the point is, um, like, be aware, this is like the starting point from this, um, or for this lesson. So there's three exercises. We do two exercises today, hopefully in about 20 minutes, and then one tomorrow where we'll continue. So, yes, let's get started. Um, here you should see my screen, yes. Um, there's a lot of different getting started guides here. And really, I'd say we have an overview, but you're going to have to be reading these quick start guides and so on things anyway. Um, can someone add a panda section to the notes? I can't do that right now because I'm talking. Okay. Yeah, so the pandas overview. It's conventionally imported by import pandas as PD, as a shorthand. And then it provides lots of functions, like for example, reading from CSV, which I think NumPy also provides a CSV reading, but it actually does a lot more and provides lots of summary um, information and things like this. But now Yarno yes, will be so. the one doing typing. So let's switch to Yarno's screen. Yeah. So so I guess the main difference between or in terms of like reading CSV file, um, in NumPy, an array will always have all the data in the array will be the same type. If there's one in the cherry tool in the chairs, if it's there's one floating word number, it's all floating word numbers. And pandas has different kinds of columns. So it, it reads the column header and it has a lot yeah. more information about different types of data. Yeah. So let's show this. So yeah. we've got I guess, a... Yeah. First things first. So I guess oh, I'll yeah. uh, start by importing it. And we'll be going relatively fast here. So you can try to follow along, but at some point we'll probably get ahead of you and then stop, watch what we're doing, and come back to it during the exercises. Yeah. OK, so okay, Yarno's so, imported pandas. So then there is this um, address in the notes, which I will mostly copy, although I think I missed .csv. Um, so I'm just setting this string to a variable, and yeah. this contains a CSV file, uh, and then Again, I didn't create them. Okay. <clears throat> so so this could be here... also a file on your computer just as well. Yeah. What called... we're seeing here is loading the data directly from the web. Yeah. So um, I will call the data frame Titanic because it is about uh, passengers on Titanic. And let's just read CSV function to read it. Oops. The mouse is hovering over the... Text okay, and uh, the URL is URL. the thing set here, yeah. and I will also and... tell it to use an index column. What is an index column? So, well, let's show the next line, the Titanic yeah. dot head, and we can see. 
So every pandas array has columns and rows, but notice the first row here is an index. It's bold. And the first column, this one's so the main column here. Yeah. yeah. So okay. basically in NumPy, we'd access these rows by rows <clears throat> 0, 1, 2, and so on. In pandas, we can also access it by these names here, which we will see a little bit later. Yeah, OK, let's do another one. So but, another very useful function to start with is describe with the describe. Yes, that's spelled correctly. Yeah. OK, so we so see there's there are statistics, summary yeah. statistics here. So how much data actually exists. <clears throat> and um, I guess the it's a, um, and, yeah, the, these are the um, yeah, percentiles, like this shows twenty five percent to fifty percent. So, so they're, they're not that useful for passenger ID, but yeah. let's say if you look at age, for example, yeah. then it makes some sense. Yeah. So let's go on. Um, yeah. There's two more things here. We will show them, but not explain what they do. So these two commands are like show how you can do some pretty fancy things. Okay. So the group by means if they survived or not, we separate them to two groups and then take the age of those groups. And then we find the average age of these people. OK, so. Um... OK. So let's group, run group it. by survived, take the age and take the mean of the age. There we go. Okay, so <clears> we <throat> see the average ages for survived one and didn't survive zero is pretty similar. Hmm. And let's do the next one. So this histogram. Okay, that's slightly so Titanic. Which I think basically probably needs to be. Okay, yeah. So H column. So this is going to make a histogram of the ages. And there'll be two groups, the passengers who survived and didn't survive, and then some other parameters, like the number of bins, the layout, and so on. I wonder so how on. important these parameters are for this example. I'll just it's, copy. Yeah, I would say just copy. like. So figure exactly. size, layout. Um, yeah some ordering, but, chair but let's, access. Let's just go on. We, we aren't, at this point, we aren't knowing what these um, things mean. Um, OK, so positional argument follows uh, keyword Ah, there's by, by equal survived there. Oh, this needs to be have an equal sign. OK, yes. OK. <clears throat> and we see these two figures. So 0 yeah. didn't survive, and 1 did survive. And this so is we're not, uh, showing the histogram of age. So yeah, yeah. So we're not going into the details here now because this is just a preview. But now let's go to the actual details of what just happened. Okay. So okay. Let's, um, so what's in a data frame? Maybe. So let's start with the info function, I guess. C um, can, can you go <clears throat> to the screen or the lesson again? Yes. Let's, there's a picture there. Yeah. OK, yeah, so this is what a data frame looks like. So we see it consists of rows and columns with column names instead of just numbers at the top and an index column on the left side. <laughs> so each of these columns themselves is a pandas.series object. And the data itself inside of these series objects is stored as NumPy arrays. OK, so should we go back to Panda, back to the Jupyter, and let's run so that's Titanic.info? Also, um, the head looks <clears throat> a lot like the, uh, the picture, although a little bit different. Yes. There's also the info function, which tells you okay. what columns exist. and what types those those are. So these are the yeah. series that exist in this yeah. data frame. And these data types are, in fact, the NumPy 
data types there. Yeah. At least in 64 and float 64. So once we have this, we can do things like we can extract out single columns. For example, we can do Titanic and so then slice the Titanic, age and in then there. take the age. Um, and we can index it now by the name, uh, the column name. Um, yes. Yeah, the column name age, okay. which is useful. And we see, so notice it's pulled out both the names and the ages because this index got preserved in the series itself. And then we can, there's another <clears throat> short in here, titanic.age with the column name. So this doesn't okay. work when age is also an attribute of the data frame, but it's convenient for shorthands. It's, so this is the same thing basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can list all the columns with titanic.columns. Okay. So now it and returns a list. Otherwise, this is the same information as in the dot info function. Yeah. But you can, it's a list. So you can, for example, do a for loop over it. Yeah. Um, I guess it so didn't contain we... the index. No. So. You can, we okay, have uh, the name as an index, so you can also take the index. Yes. Although this will now be a list of the names. Yeah. The name of the index column is name. And this is in fact a NumPy array inside of it also. Yeah. So we can get single um, individual values different ways. So for example, yeah. this dot loc method, titanic dot loc, we can give it a position by the index and then column name. So now I'm, so the index is the name again. So I'm typing a name in and then column name is age. It's easy to make a spelling mistake here. So it might actually be good yeah. to, okay, Kiera. I think lamb is capitalized. Yeah. Um, okay. None. So okay. Is... Well, that was, uh, the age is not recorded okay. in the data frame. Yeah. So there is a little bit more stuff. here. I think we don't have time to go yeah. into all these details, but um, we can do things like using at, we can set a value. So okay, if we do that. copy, yes. Um. Okay, well, I'm not going to use the index method here, so I'll just copy the name. Yes. Should we set the age of age? It uh, says set age to 42. Oh, yeah. uh, well, okay. I mean, I said it to 40 instead of 42, yeah. but that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. We don't actually know the age. Yeah. Okay. So one thing that taken me some time to get used to is you can use this loc and at method to get values based on the names in the indexes. But you can use the iloc and iat functions to get values based on like first row, second row, first column, second right. column, and so on. And these both have different uses in different cases. For example, if there's a big time series, then um, it makes sense to extract like what happened on this day. But if you're iterating through, maybe it makes sense to get the first row, then second row, and so on. Mm. Okay. So um, basically, it depends on if you're doing something for all the columns, then or splitting it in some way by numbers, then to use the numbers. Otherwise, it's more readable to use the names usually. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, um, we can do the Boolean indexing just like NumPy arrays. So for example, yeah, okay. let's get the... Um, so I guess I'll do it in a couple the, of steps. So um, or did you want to get any um, something other than this no. age thing? Yeah, let's go so, on. So let's, let's extract um, the passengers that are older than age yeah. 70. So this returns a Boolean thing. It's just mostly false. Most people are not over 70 years old. But I can use that as an index for the array and just take the take the passengers um, who 
far older than 70 years old. Yes, yeah. five of them. So this is just now all passengers older than 70. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and this looks a lot like the NumPy syntax because it's designed around that. Yeah. It's good that things okay. work in a similar way. Yeah. So um, there's a lot more things to demonstrate here. For example, we can get all the NA values. We can remove the NA values. We can replace the missing data with other things. Uh, which one would you like to demonstrate? Um, Maybe let's... So, okay, what you would oh. mostly need to do is, um, well, often you just need to drop the none values. Uh, this doesn't create a new data frame. Uh, this does not overwrite the data frame. It creates a new one and returns that. So we don't actually change this Titanic data frame now. Yeah. But um, it's often useful to get the data frame that only contains non-defined uh, values. Of course, you can also, you might want to first take a set of columns and then drop the values, or drop the rows where those columns columns are not defined. Because uh, this is dropping everything, whether even uh, any value in any column is none. This is dropping it. OK. Mm. So we are going yeah. a little bit fast here, but that's by design to give you more time for exercises. So again, we're just summarizing the biggest high level things. OK, mm. the next section. So now there's exercises, but instead we're going to cover the next little section. Well, not so little, but then have you do two exercises at once. So now there's tidy data. So this is not purely panda stuff itself, but also it's about how you arrange the data itself. So in tidy data, the idea is that every column is a variable, and each variable has its own column, and each observation is a row. So for example, down here, we're making a sample thing about runners. And if Yarno creates that. Yes, let's go back one. to demonstrating. So I will, again, just copy this data in. Um, yep. But it contains three runners and some values for, I guess, run times. Mm -hmm. And now runners is a data frame. OK, so yes. distances and times for those distances run. So is this tidy data? Mm, no. So there's multiple measurements per row here. It's, yes. it's measuring run times for four different, uh, maybe no. possibly different runs, but at least in four different place, uh, places in the same run, possibly. But in any case, four different measurements. So basically, yes. Every row contains the results from four different races. So what's next? This melt function. OK, um, so maybe it's just a comment while I write it. So we'll replace the runner's data frame. Pandas.melt is the function. And we put runners, the current runner's data frame in. And then we have to define a set of variables that Well, I mean, these are kept so, in the rows, in every row. So this is something that identifies um, the runner or the experiment or the um, the subject, the experimental subject, something you want to keep. And this is not a measurable. This is not a, something you measure. This is something that identifies the measurement. So the name of the runner is not something you measure. It's something that identifies the measurement. And then I guess value variables. And those are then the, the um, actually these are numbers. So these are the 
columns that contain actual measured values. So these we want to split into separate rows, and these we do not. Um, I guess then we need a name for this new variable. So we split this into multiple rows so that creates a new column. We want a name for that column. So what is the name for these numbers? I guess distance, distance run. And what is the name for the thing that we're measuring here? That's time. Okay, hopefully, oh, not quite right. Um, it's not present. Uh, these variables are not present in the data frame. 400, 800, 1200. okay, maybe they are strings. Maybe. Mm. No. Nope. Can you? So I'll can you, co can you copy from thing. the lesson? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. I, I think we if should try to go. Well, it did work now. Yeah. OK, so it so... was some spelling error somewhere. Mm -hmm. OK, so what did it do? Um, it so took all of these now... numbers and made a row for each of them. And then we have identifying information. So this mm -hmm. runner name and this ti uh, column title go here as identifying information for that measurement. Yeah. OK. Um, and this is now tidy data. And the reason is that each row is only one observation. An observation is the amount of time it took on a race. And this lets us do things like the group by we saw before. So basically, by using the other operations, we can do cool stuff on this. But we need to carry on now. So again, this is a thing that there's a linked article that you should probably read. Um, it has a lot more and really convinced me why this is a good idea. OK, working with data frames. So there's a lot of other stuff we can do with them. And I'd propose that you all can read this as well as we can say it right here. Um, is there anything to comment on? Um, there's, yeah, there's an example of making a data frame that has a date range index where all the index values are um, a certain date. And then once with other things and shows how we can combine them, merge them, and so on. But yeah, I'd propose we go to the exercises now no. and leave the 20 minutes for them. So we'll come back at 52. And we can go into more details about things tomorrow and after we get back. Does that sound good? Mm, yeah, that sounds good. OK, great. So let's go to the exercises um, until 52 um, and see you then. OK, bye. Hello, we are hey. back. So uh, we have a little bit of wrap up for the day. and. We know this was a rather rough lesson. So like um, I tried to motivate when we started, pandas is the kind of thing that even we are always going through and reading about it to figure out how to do things. So 
this is sort of an impossible um, lesson to teach. So we can either go so slow that we don't show anything interesting or show some cool stuff, but you need to go back and read to figure out how it works yourself later. And we tried to have a little mix in here. And well, it didn't work that well. That's, um, well, it's unfortunate, but we'll try to do better next time. But it's sort of how it is. So by the way, at the bottom of the notes here, you have um, the uh, so a place you can vote about what you thought of the lesson. So use this poll to say what you thought of it, and please give us comments. And we'll go look at those quickly. So any comments from the exercises or what we can do? Let's take a look. Um. So this thing here, so the problem with this we see and the solution here. So the difference is these are in parentheses here. So basically Python gets this order of operations wrong where it would try to do the ampersand first and then the comparison. And I know this has tripped me a lot many times in the past. Um, so much, in fact, that I just, nowadays, if I type an ampersand, I also type the parentheses around both sides just automatically, because <laughs> otherwise it will usually fail. OK. Yeah. yeah. OK. Um. And yeah, so there's this convention in Python that when you're slicing things, the first index is included and the second one is not included. And that's, well, Python or pandas follows the Python convention. And you can read there the debate on which one is better or worse or, well, it's a, uh, it's an interesting question and let's not get into that. We can write by chat. Are there any other question, um, questions or comments here? So Yarna, what's your overall summary of pandas? Like what should someone have gotten from this lesson? Well, one thing is the, um, just that it exists, that the how the data frames work. So there is a Python library that's really good at um, this sort of table-like data and you can do kind of magical things with it. Um, well, I guess that last part of the sentence was the second one. So um, you don't need to remember how to do this, um, all of these things. Um, it's mostly you will look through um, do a, a web search for what you want to do and look through the documentation. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it, it is, uh, it can do kind of similar things to what a spreadsheet can do, but a lot faster and you can save yeah. it as script. Yeah. Maybe my summary would be if you're making things that have like, a bunch of NumPy arrays, one for each effective column, or you have these deeply recursive dictionaries of lists or lists of dictionaries or things like that, mm -hmm. then maybe pandas with all this extra structure, like the indexes, the names, the way you can slice different things can do it better. And we'll see another example of this tomorrow. But as of now, uh, we have this feedback of the day. So please, um, please comment here. It's the only way we have to improve things. So there will be videos produced for tomorrow. Um, uh, hopefully 
if you would like to help with that, please let us know. Um, there is, yeah, and if you can do the stuff of today, then tomorrow should be okay. It's more important to have Jupyter Lab or similar because we do visualization and we need to show these graphics in the notebooks. And if there are any problems with the software today, you should make sure you install this for tomorrow. Uh, yes. Um, uh, this any positive feedback kinds of things. So yeah, I mean, this is, if you're completely new to Python now, like you're still using the Python syntax a little bit today, will have been really hard. But don't let that discourage you because, um, I mean, this is a medium, like an intermediate kind of course. But hopefully you can stop, take a like step back and watch and see what we're doing and use this as inspiration when you're learning on your loan, on your own later on. Yeah, so Any other comments? A lot of this is an overview of a lot of stuff um, that yeah. will will probably be useful at some point in the future. But um, so there is one comment that there is a lot of material and that's uh, stressing uh, that can stress you out. Um, but yeah, the idea is not that we cover or that you learn all of the material. It's a it's a selection you can go for what you're interested in. And um, yeah, not everything will uh, be useful immediately. You will not learn everything immediately, but you can always come back. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, it's time to stop. So let's go with that. See you all tomorrow. Same time, a yeah. little bit early for icebreakers and initial discussion. And thank you for attending.